Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are y'all doing? Hope you're doing great. Please check out the description box for nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye as well for even more links. Now in the last video, we started off with some physics here, a few variables, nothing special. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to make sure this works. The first step is going to be to create an init physics, physics here a little private function and I'll define that. The thing this is going to do is it's going to initialize our physics variables. I know we have a init variables here, but we're not going to use that for this. I do use init variables for the animation here. If you want, you could control X that put it in init animations. If you want, it doesn't really matter to me, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it in our constructor init physics in the file player.cpp. Go ahead and add init physics in here because it's part of a player class. The next step is to start seeing what we need to make this work. I have a few variables. Like I said, I'm going to rename deceleration to drag because we ask more how we're going to use it. Drag is when air hits a moving body or any, any type of, uh, what, what do you call it? Any type of car, whatever it, it's drag. So it's going to create some resistance and movement. It's going to slow you down. And that's something we're going to multiply our velocity with constantly, just like in the real world, kind of. And also acceleration will be applied to our velocity whenever we want to move something. But since drag is constantly being applied to the velocity, counteracting the acceleration, we're going to slow down automatically. That's how we want to create our physics system. One thing we don't have here is a max velocity. I'm going to create a float variable here, velocity max. We're going to set this up, of course. Now we're going to go into that function we created and start setting these variables. Max velocity or velocity max is going to be maybe set to 10F. And before I do anything else, by the way, if you go to your game.cpp, make sure that you have a frame limit set to the same one I have set because we're not using delta time in this video. And that is because I want to get to that as we go on in the next smaller games. This is still a small game. This is just to teach you about animations. So set the frame lim limit to what I have. We can even set this to 60 if you want, but I guess I, I bet you'll be able to manage 144. You know what? Let's just do 60 for you guys in case you guys can't handle that 60. We should all have 60. So our game runs at the same speed. We'll talk about this later. We don't have to go into detail on that. Just make sure it's the same as I have it now. Once we have velocity max, let's set our acceleration to one dot F and let's set our drag coefficient to 0.98 F. We'll start there and we'll see what we want later on. Once these three are set, you're ready pretty much to start working with physics. We don't really have anything going right now for movement. So let's create that first. Let's create a move function for the player void move. And this is what we're going to use to move our player const float their X const float their Y. Let me explain what's going on here. This move function isn't like SFML's move function. I'll define that. It is because this move function is only going to take a direction. All right. Minus one to positive one. Anything in between that will be like an arrow pointing diagonally or whatever. All right. So combining the direction in X and Y will give us a direction where we're, which we're going to move. And if you're familiar with vectors, vectors are both a direction and a speed. That's what our velocity is. This is not that this is not a vector. This is just a direction. It doesn't have any size to it. It only says in which way we want to move to move to the left. You'd have a negative one here in the X direction and a positive or a zero on Y. If you want to move to the right, you'd have a positive X and a zero Y. If you want to move up, you'd have a negative Y and a zero X. And if you want to move down, you'd have a positive Y and a zero X. You understand that. And anywhere in between those values, you can move in any way like a circle. All right. In any way within that circle, you can point to any direction combining these two values. Once you have that set, we'll control S this. We'll go into player.cpp and we'll start a few things. This physics system is going to consist of acceleration, which will be happening in the move function, limiting limit velocity, which will also be happening in the move section function. And then we'll have a deceleration update here. 
and we'll also limit deceleration so we don't start moving in the negative direction or the opposite direction of what we're decelerating from so say we're moving to the right and we hit we decelerate until zero and we want the player to stop then we don't want the player to keep then start accelerating in the opposite direction so this is great this is amazing let's start off with the let's start off with the deceleration because it's pretty easy to decelerate something we want to remember we're gonna we have well, this is a platformer so we're decelerating in the x and the y direction but we have to think of this as a physics system so i'm going to decelerate both the y and the x which might not make sense but we'll look at that later because then i'm going to add a constant gravity to this player which will keep moving it down the deceleration will still affect it in the y direction but the gravity is going to be stronger so it's going to keep moving down and this will help us in our jump because when we jump we're just going to simply add an acceleration upwards which will just jump and then the deceleration will take care of everything on its own so this is how we're going to do it and hopefully this is going to be a very nice system for us to work with deceleration so first of all this velocity dot x you might want to do this dot x multiplied by something but sfml has a great way and a great operator for the vector 2f library or the vector 2f class to decelerate and accelerate so we can just multiply the entire uh, entire velocity with the drag value and sorry did i say did i say something else i meant the class has an operator to where you can multiply one float value to both the values in this vector 2f once you do that we'll decelerate that's all you have to do it will keep decelerating this constantly but you want to do a multiplied equal to here that's also something very important you want to multiply whatever it is in that situation in that moment in time with drag so we'll keep decelerating it now to limit our deceleration is quite simple but since we're using this drag coefficient it might be that we need another variable here which is called velocity min there we go and you'll see this see the reason for this as we go along here this velocity min and you might think it should be zero but it shouldn't it shouldn't let us set this to maybe let's set it to two for now and that is because or one even that's because when you multiply something with a percentage like this it will be very 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 teensy and it will keep moving really slowly to one direction in the end you don't want that you want it to stop moving completely after a certain minimum velocity has been reached that's why we have this and this is usually used in combination with a drag coefficient like this let's go back to our function where we're updating physics and let's limit the deceleration it's very easy if this velocity dot x is less than this velocity min remember to have min and also we need to do a std abs here velocity x is less than velocity min let's set this velocity dot x to 0 0.f very simple we need to do the same thing for the y and we'll set the velocity y to zero and the absolute makes it so it doesn't matter which way you're going as soon as it reaches velocity minimum the absolute value reaches velocity minimum we'll set it to zero it's a very simple deceleration technique very easy now we come to the heart of the whole thing the acceleration so we're going to be multiplying this we're going to be adding sorry this velocity dot x plus equal to this is very important because whatever velocity is already we want to keep that and we want to just add to it something which would be the direction in x if you're multi if you're adding to the velocity in the direction in the x direction you want to use their x so their x multiplied by this acceleration see easy peasy and you just control d on that line and you'll get a new line and change these two to y so velocity y and direction y once that's done it's very very simple now this isn't going to really be used here because we're going to be adding gravity to this but we haven't got into that yet let's keep moving here though and limit the velocity at least and our velocity max remember that is 10 
So we want to limit the velocity. Now, how do we limit a velocity like this? A simple way to do it would be if std abs, all right, we want to make sure the velocity x doesn't matter which direction we're going, negative or positive. If it's greater than this velocity max, then we want to do something. So this is great. This is a great way to check both for the negative and the positive direction. But what happens in here is important in here as well, because we want to make sure that we limit it. We don't want to set this to zero now, right? We want to set it to velocity max, but velocity max is a positive value. So if we're moving in the left direction, we set it to velocity max, we'll start moving in the right direction because there's a positive value. To move to the left, we need to move in a negative value. To do that, I'm going to say this, sorry, this velocity.x equals this velocity max multiplied by, and I'm going to use a ternary operator here, multiplied by something, if something, then we'll multiply it with one minus 1.0 f, 1.f, f, or 1.f. F. And what is the or in here? Well, we're going to check if this velocity.x is less than zero, because if it's less than zero, we're moving to the left, then we want to multiply velocity max with minus one, which will make it a negative value. And that will make sure our velocity x is set to a negative velocity max, moving to the left. Otherwise, we will multiply it with 1.f, which doesn't change this, and it will be a positive direction, the, the right way, so to speak, to the right, okay? Once that is done, you can limit it, and you can accelerate your player. All this is good and done. Let's update this now. We have not used any of this, so I'm going to do a this update. I'm actually going to call that after all this, this update physics like that. Very simple. And that's the only new one we created, new function we created uh, since last video. And then we have our move, which we aren't using right now. We'll use that. But also remember to call this init physics. Don't forget to call it in here because otherwise you're going to have some issues. Once that's done, let's start using our move function for the player. Let's go down to where we're moving the player. In update player, we have our move here. Good. Now, instead of move like this, we're going to do this move instead in that direction. Like that. Good. Minus one and one if we want to move to the right. One last thing we have to, of course, do is we need to set the sprite's position or move the sprite in here. I'm going to do that in update physics. I'm going to go ahead and do this sprite dot move this velocity, current velocity, basically. That's it. So we'll move it with the velocity it has right now. Let's run this and see if we can manage to move our player in any way, shape or form. So we're going to have to retune our variables a little bit. I'm going to put drag a little higher. So the lower you go, the more it's going to slow down. We'll have our velocity minimum at one. We'll put our acceleration to maybe three. We will put our velocity maximum to 10 and we'll try to run this. And now our player should move and stop properly. And we have a limit to our velocity. You can see that pretty clearly. That's how we want to do it. And that is a much more smooth way of moving. Now we don't have any gravity yet and all that, but we'll have that in the next video. We'll update the gravity in here in the update physics section, because we're just multiplying velocity with drag here. We can actually add something with the gravity down here. So we have a constant gravity going, but for now, this is good. You can tweak these values a little more. If you want, you can put this maximum maybe to uh, 15 you can put acceleration to 2 maybe if you want to move a little slower uh, you can also uh, increase and decrease the drag so you can you can fine tune this basically so it looks better now if we have the same values here and we have the same frame rate limit it should look fine the animations aren't really in sync with the movement speed but we'll fix that as well don't worry about that it'll look great so thank you so much for sticking with me thanks for watching take care guys and i'll see you in the next one right bye bye